Hi, this is Eric Keller for Otoy, and in this video we're going to talk about how you can use the volume medium node to create this kind of fog effect. So I'm using it in this scene to kind of create the look of a murky underwater kind of environment. But you can also use the volume medium node for things like fog and that kind of that kind of stuff. So it's great for lighting effects. So let's start by taking a look at how I set up the lights in this scene. The first thing you want to do when you're working with volume medium is pay attention to the kernel type that you have selected because this will affect the rendering of the uh, volume medium. If I set the kernel type to direct light, you can see eh, it's, it's there, but it is going to look significantly different than if I render it with, say, path trace or PMC. So generally, I prefer path trace just for starting out when I'm adding it to the scene. And then if I decide I need something like PMC, uh, I'll switch to that later on. So here's the camera view right here. I've hidden the kelp for the moment, but if I turn this on, you can see that the kelp is essentially a paint effects kelp stroke turned into polygons. So that's not terribly fancy. I'm just gonna hide it for the moment so that uh, it makes the scene a little bit faster. And let's switch to the perspective view. and I'll zoom out a bit. So I've set up the lights using a simple Octane Sun Sky Transform node. So that's the environment node or the texture environment. Uh, and this is created, you know, if you're on the Octane render shelf, you can create one of these by clicking on this icon right here. But I already have one in this scene. Uh, and I also have a single Octane light, also pretty simple. So it's basically a simple spherical light and it's just slightly off camera. Uh, so if I select the Octane Sun Sky Transform node, let's go to its attributes here in the Attribute Editor. So we take a look at the attributes for the Octane Sun Sky node. You can see that I've set the type to Texture Environment. You could also use a Daylight Environment uh, with the Volume node. In this case, I just wanted a very dark, dark color for the background uh, of sort of the underwater scene. So, if, so I've set this to Texture Environment and if I take a look at the uh, texture, it's connected to a simple RGB color, an RGB spectrum node, and that color is set to a very dark green. So very simple. The medium, however, is essentially what's creating that effect that we're seeing, that kind of foggy halo around the light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, break this connection here, and let's connect a new node just so you can see how to hook one up. So I'll click on the checker box next to medium. This opens up the create render node window and we're on the octane medium options right here. So I'm going to click on octane volume medium. And that takes me over to the attributes for the volume medium. And if I take a look through the can render camera, let's take a look through the render camera and let's bring up our uh, render view. And I'll do render a snapshot, camera one, just to make sure that's loaded, and hit IPR. And what we're gonna see is a very, very dark scene. This is what you generally see when you first hook up the volume medium to the uh, Sun Sky node, and it's not very inspiring. The problem is, is that the scale, by default, is set to 100. If I set this down to one, automatically you can see now we have our scene. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the camera node here, and just really quickly set the aperture down to zero to remove some of that uh, depth of field blurring. So it'd get a little bit clearer. So let me go down to Octane Camera, Thin Lens, and I'm going to set the aperture. It's now at 20. I'll set this to zero. Now we'll see the scene is, is uh, clear. And you can see that the light that I have, the light transform, it's off camera here. So it's right out of frame. So you can bring it down like this, and you can see it gets much brighter. There's the light itself. So I've actually put it off the frame because I just wanted the glow from that light. But you can see if I select it, it's very bright. It's set up to uh, 4300. The power is set to about 4300. The temperature is set to a cool color. Uh, other than that, it's kind of the standard settings. I've set this to movable proxy. But other than just being a very bright light, there's not that much special going on there. Um, so let's go back to the Octane Sun Sky Transform. And let's go back to our medium. So I just set the scale to one. So if you watch what happens is I increase the scale, 
it is actually changing the scale of the medium. You could kind of think of it as like maybe in a way kind of like the thickness, but if I set this too high, you can see that it gets very, very dim and very quickly. So let's set this at about two just to see, you know, because I kind of like the fall off that it's creating in the light here. Now it's not looking terribly fuzzy, it's still looking fairly clear. So to bring in some of that fuzziness, we need to adjust two settings, absorption and scattering. So if I start to pump up the absorption, you can already see in the background some of that green light is uh, coming through. If I increase the scattering, we can see that's going to bring in some of that kind of fuzziness that we associate with the fog. But right now it's not looking terribly convincing. The next um, setting that we need to adjust is the phase. So as we increase the phase value, what's going to happen is you can see the fuzziness is going to become kind of concentrated or denser around that light source. And the closer we get to one, you can see now we're getting kind of that glow is happening to the light and then we have more of a fall off. If I go all the way up to one, it's going to be a little bit overly exaggerated and start to affect the look of the other objects in the scene, the bright ones. So I like to go just below one. Let's try 0.98 as a value and you can see now it's getting, you know, it's not necessarily making the objects look soft, but it really is kind of um, affecting that bright light. So if I, I select the light, I'm going to move it up a little bit to like something like that, kind of like that kind of effect. And let's go back to our Sun Sky node and back to the Medium node. So the interesting thing about the phase, and I kind of got this uh, description from uh, Billy Brooks over at Otoy, but I think it's a good way to think of it. If you're at zero, think of that fog being kind of like right where you are, right where the camera is. As we move the phase to a positive direction, we're kind of pushing the effect forward towards the light source. So it's kind of going in front of us, and if we go into the negative direction, it's kind of like it's behind us, which is kind of weird, uh, but it is an option that you can use and you can kind of play with that to get different effects. But really the effect I'm looking for is most noticeable when phase is set to something like 0.98. And then after you've got kind of the phase where you want it, you can start to kind of experiment with bringing up the scattering and uh, changing the absorption as well. So you can see if I bring the absorption down, it's not quite as bright, but we definitely get, because the scattering is kind of high, we get a really kind of dense murkiness here, which looks kind of interesting too. I think essentially once you get past the scale and the phase, it starts to become a lot easier to use. But those two concepts take a little bit of messing around with at first before you start to get hang the hang of using uh, the, the volume medium. Now you can uh, put a color into absorption. So if I wanted to really make this look kind of like an underwater scene, I'm going to click on this checker box and then I'm going to go to the create render node and RGB spectrum. And let's set this to kind of a bluish color. You can see immediately putting a color into the absorption greatly affects how it, uh, how it looks in the scene. And now we got something that really looks kind of like underwater here. So I've set the aperture of the rendering camera to 20 just to bring back some of that depth of field. And I also turned the kelp strokes back on. Uh, I wanted to point out a couple other basic settings uh, when using the volume medium node. The volume step length setting, if you lower this, it will increase the quality of the, uh, of the volume media. So it can help to reduce some of that noise. Another setting that's uh, kind of interesting, we talked earlier about the scale setting right here. If I go to the Octane Sun and Sky node, look under Texture Environment, and under Medium, there's also Medium Radius, which is similar to Scale. I set this to five, you can see that the scene gets very, very dark. 
So generally speaking, when you're working with uh, a medium node, I would pick one or the other, preferably the scale to work with it first. And then if you need to adjust the medium radius, you can. Uh, so if we take a look at the medium radius at five, you can see we're getting this very uh, dark green light here and not much of the scene is visible. Let's set this back to one and let's go into the medium node and set the scale to five. So you can see it is a different effect. They're not exactly the same thing, but they can work against each other if you're not careful. So you might want to start out with uh, leaving medium radius at say a volume, leaving medium radius at one, adjust the scale, and then use the medium radius as a, as a further adjustment to the look of the effect.